the spirit. Now it's important once again to start at the beginning of this to see what what argument is being made and see what points are being made in succession about that argument rather than to take every individual sentence here and word here and try and make it mean something. That's a really, really key thing to me when we're studying the scriptures is to understand it as a whole and the message of it and take from that rather than, you know, a lot of, uh, this is a bit of my, I don't have a big problem per se with Bible schools, but one of the dangers of uh, theology and Bible school and the study and stuff is when you start studying the Bible, sometimes what you'll get is you'll get a list of theologies and doctrines, and it'll be like the doctrine about salvation, the doctrine about this, the doctrine about this, and you'll you'll be tempted to take a bunch of verses and to just put the verses under different categories as referring to different things. All right, that's what we're tempted to do often, and I think that's a dangerous way to to interpret the scriptures in some ways because it's some people they call it proof texting so if i want to say something i decide what i want to say then i can find three or four passages in the bible anywhere anything i want to say i can find three or four passages in the bible that will back me up and make it sound like what i'm saying is true and that's why you have to get the big picture and the message all together and then take your teaching out of that and then use that to apply to your hearers. So continuing on, the first thing here, he's saying Jesus, he's talking about suffering, first of all, and how it's okay if we suffer because Christ suffered. Christ suffered once for all, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Okay, now this is important. Jesus says um, in the Gospel of John that he gave his flesh for the life of this world. This is really important. Jesus himself, his spirit, so to speak, did not die. Okay, God cannot die. It's that simple. That's the problem a lot of Muslims have. How did God die? Well, God became a man because men can die. And the physical body of Jesus, the man Jesus, he died on the cross. But that's why Jesus said when he was dying and he said he passed he says he gave up the ghost. It says, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he also says to the thief on the cross, today you'll be with me in paradise. Today you'll be with me in paradise. And so a couple of things to think about. He was put to death in the flesh, made alive by the spirit. By which also, uh, so by the spirit, I would assume, he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now, the question starts to happen here is, um, how is it that Jesus went and preached to the spirits that were in prison? And there's a number of different opinions about this, but the first thing to note here is what it says in the next verse, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Now, yeah, so how did, how did Jesus go and preach to the spirits who were in prison? There's two, once again, I'm going to give you two interpretations, kind of, that are at least uh, in line with the rest of Scripture. And the first one would be that... You know, Jesus in Luke 16, he talks about how in in Hades, there's this great divide and no one can cross it. And it's between the, it's between the, um, the righteous and the unrighteous. And you have Abraham's bosom, and then you have Hades, the waiting place for judgment. Yeah, right. And so it calls the, it says these spirits were in prison and that they were disobedient. And so I would assume this is the, the men who lived around the time of Noah, who disobeyed God's call to come into the ark. And now Jesus, in a sense, is proving to them, showing his righteousness to them, in that he did 
he did pay for sin. And he's going and he's proving that. He's not giving them a second opportunity to get out. But he's going, in a sense, to show his righteousness. And then uh, the other... Yeah, I guess there's there's a number of other interpretations people will take on that. But to me, it seems like that Jesus was going to to speak to these people who are in prison, in a sense, in Hades, because um, yeah, because he has now proven by his death, by his suffering, by being put to death in the flesh and made alive by the Spirit, that he was righteous in his judgment of them. So that's the simple explanation for that. Now verse 21 says, The like figure, or the symbol, or the picture whereunto, even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, now this says that baptism saves us. And the truth is, first of all, that baptism does save us, but not physical baptism. Okay, the word baptism in the Bible just means to be immersed. And in order to be saved, the Holy Spirit has to baptize you into Jesus Christ, into his body. You have to be put into the body of Christ spiritually. And your physical baptism, when Christians get baptized, it's a picture of that. They're declaring to the world and to God their obedience to him. And they're declaring that they have died to themselves and they've been made alive in Jesus Christ. So it's simply a picture of what spiritually has happened. But what he's talking about here, it seems like, is physical baptism. And he's saying it pictures. It goes back to verse 18. He's not going back to verse 19 and 20, going through judgment. He's going back to verse 18 when he says in this same picture, in verse 21. So the, the, the idea is Jesus was put to death in the flesh and made alive by the Spirit. And that's what we picture in baptism. In baptism, the picture is we are dead to ourselves and we're alive spiritually to God through Jesus Christ. And then it makes it even more clear so that people won't get it confused. It says, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. So baptism doesn't wash us. It doesn't clean us. Um, it's the answer of a good conscience towards God. So he is speaking here about physical baptism. And what it pictures is the same thing that happened to Jesus. That he died and that he was raised from the dead. And every one of us, we need to die spiritually and we need to be raised from the dead spiritually that happens when we put our trust in jesus and the holy spirit puts us into the body of christ the old man is put to death and the new man is created anew in righteousness which loves god and desires to obey him and it's that new creation it talks about in second corinthians five seventeen. if any man is in christ the old has passed away the old all things have become new right if any man is in christ he is a new creation so yeah that's all i have to say about um first peter 3 verse 18 to 21 there's a number of different opinions about it i will not pretend that there is not or that i have the corner on the market of truth on this passage but i would just um share that with you to think about and some important things to remember right is um whatever this does say it's not going to contradict what we already know from the scriptures that that after death comes judgment, that there is one death, not many. We die once and then we face judgment. And there, there's no second chances after the grave. Jesus makes that very clear in Luke chapter 16. And then also it makes it clear here, baptism does not save us. It is how we answer God with a good conscience because of what he's done for us. So those things are, I think, important to remember in understanding this passage. And it takes a lot of things to kind of piece together what's happening here doctrinally, where Jesus is going to visit these spirits in prison, but he's not giving them a second chance. 
it would seem that he is declaring to them his righteousness. And the other view kind of is that this is just looking at it historically. They're saying that through Noah, Jesus was preached by Noah to these people before they died and went to prison before the flood happened. And so that's a, another interpretation of that. But I'm sorry if that's really confusing, but hopefully that at least clears up some things for you. As I said, it's, I'm pretty sure this is one of the top most controversial passages in the scripture. That it, like there's the most different opinions on this passage that I, that I know of, of a lot of passages. So if you go read a commentary, almost every commentary will say something different. So yeah, we know it doesn't, we can't interpret the scriptures in a way that contradicts what we already know and is already clear. So yeah, that's all I have to share about that. Does anyone else have anything to add to that? Or... Nice enough. Ah, no. Win win jinda. Maj majlo cut out na na. Sorry to say that. No no. Chapter ni maga dada pu clear ga onde. First Peter chapter three. ఎయిటీన్ టు ట్వంటీ అక్కడ ఉన్న విషయం ఏంటి నోవాహు టైంలో యేసుక్రీస్తు ఆత్మ రూపంలో వెళ్ళి సువార్త ప్రకటించాడా లేకపోతే అసలు అక్కడ ఉన్న కాన్సెప్ట్ ఏంటి మీ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ చెప్పండి మీరు చెప్పింది నాకు ఏమి వినిపించట్లేదు అదే కదా నా బాధ వాయిస్ బ్రేక్ అవుతుంది నా వాయిస్ మీకు క్లియర్ గా వస్తుంది కానీ మీ వాయిస్ అస్సలు రావట్లేదు బ్రేక్ 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 వస్తుంది ఇప్పుడు చెప్పింది కూడా నాకు అర్థం కావట్లేదు ఓకే ఓకే బ్యాప్టిజం హౌ వి ఆర్ డీలింగ్ విత్ రికార్డ్ చేయమన్న రికార్డ్ నేను మళ్ళీ చూస్తాను ఆ బ్యాప్టిజం గురించి ఆలోచన చేస్తాం కదా మరొక క్వశ్చన్ సో ఇఫ్ ఏ పర్సన్ ఇస్ బిఫోర్ హీ సెట్ రైట్ విత్ ద లార్డ్ ఇఫ్ హీ ఇస్ టేకింగ్ బ్యాప్టిజం after some time uh, okay an incident i will explain you uh, somebody who was an who was a elder was an elder in the assembly he is a elderly person uh, he was continuing in the assembly for many years so one day there was a message of gospel and uh, he was accepting the lord there and he went to uh, a person a, a great preacher Uh, secretly and he asked him brother these many years uh, i am really uh, not i could not understand uh, what the real baptism and uh, uh, salvation also so now i accept jesus christ will you give me second baptism so a elder went to a, a, a speaker a famous speaker secretly and asking him to give secretly baptism <laughs> so there are many people uh means some yeah, yeah usually it happens uh yearly three ta- three days there will be a convention in every assembly in andhra and telangana or in india so many are forced to take baptism because of that preacher is coming i want to take baptism only by joshua rova so like yeah. that every meeting 20 30 people will be there for uh, uh thing inside and uh, taking outside so so if he is understanding after some years what is if can we give him second baptism is it uh, or is first baptism uh, is it that uh, worthy baptism yeah I guess the important thing about baptism is that, like I said in 1 Peter, it's the answer of a good conscience towards God. 
it doesn't do something magical for us. It doesn't put us into Christ. It doesn't uh, make us saved. It just makes us wet. But if you're doing it for the Lord, it makes you obedient and it honors him. And it's a declaration to other people that the old you is dead and gone. Yeah. And that you're now, you're now living for Jesus. So it's a public declaration of that. And now this whole, um, <laughs> yeah, this is one of the, this is one of my, yeah, I don't want to say anything I shouldn't say. I do know a situation uh, in Canada here, close to where I live, where a a family that is uh, from Malayalam descent, uh, one of their sons got saved. And he wanted to get baptized, but they wanted him to wait for a year and a half because there was a special preacher coming from India who they wanted to baptize him. Now I'm sure that you're very familiar with that kind of uh, that kind of way of thinking, I guess. But, but it's yeah, it is it is. Sharing... Pardon? Yeah, I was sharing one of the stories. Same, what I was mm -hmm. sharing a, a happened story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 that, 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 I, I, don't, I don't see how that is scriptural. Like, when you're, the longest time anyone waited in the New Testament to get baptized was three days. And that was the Apostle Paul, and he was blind. So he had an excuse. All right. All right that, yeah, that, that, there's no idea in the scriptures that there's this long waiting period or that it's, a, it's really important who does it or how many. Or how many people are there, etc. Yeah, According here the word. that does has happen. Actually, uh, I was really, I was, uh, I think, ten years old. Uh, I was hearing gospel from a mic, and I wanted to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And I was afraid of uh, my parents if I am telling this uh, in this engage. I wanted to tell them. Uh, they won't uh, accept me. They they may say I was not knowing what they will tell, and I secretly accepted the Lord. I was st standing very far from the meeting, and I was hearing the uh, the person who is helping uh, the other guys who are accepting the Lord. He was guiding him. I was hearing from afar, and I was accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. Then actually that that was said uh, in our assemblies after. Uh, confessing sins and accepting the Lord one year at least they should be waiting mm. yeah it is the practice which is going on here uh, some are forced to take baptism after one year or two years you accepted in that meetings that uh, revival meetings or that's gospel meetings uh, two years over you do you are not taking baptism go and take Baptism or good speaker is coming. Take baptism. That is what the uh, that is what happening here. Yeah. Well, you, you know the yeah yeah, yeah yeah that that's the thing. You know I can't. <laughs> yeah yeah. I, I guess I, I can't agree with stuff. Is however sincere things may be and however long we've been doing them for. If we ever get away from the word of God, we've got to we've got to stand up for it. And it's yeah, it's just that's all I have to say is that um. The longest anyone waited in the New Testament was three days. And yeah, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, they had this same problem. And Paul speaks so strongly against it. He says, um, every one of you says, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 12, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And then he says this. This is an interesting thing to say if baptism is so important, who does it and stuff. He says, I thank God that I baptized none of you, except for Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I don't know whether I baptized anyone else. For Jesus sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So this is kind of both things in one, right? Some people think that the gospel is get baptized and get saved, and that's the wrong order, right? So he, 
he clearly says the gospel is not baptism because I preached the gospel, but I didn't baptize. But he also clearly says it doesn't matter who baptizes you. It matters that you're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, right? Yeah. <laughs> what matters is that you're baptized in, in Christ. <laughs> and that's and that's the whole point. So I think I would strongly question anyone's motives that is waiting for a certain preacher or person to come and to baptize them, other than just a, a, a brother in the Lord that that wants to see them grow in that way. There's no idea in the scripture that there's some kind of special ceremony or special meeting or special preacher or it has to be in an assembly building or with the group of assembly. <laughs> Look at uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 37, and you've got um, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. The only people at his baptism were the eunuch and Philip, as far as we know, and God. But he wanted to do it. It was a public declaration to the Lord in the best way he knew how. And, th and then there's other people that got baptized and it became very public knowledge and stuff. But yeah, the point is, it's first of all an act of obedience. It's second of all a public declaration. And thirdly, it's nothing to do with who does it to us. And it's nothing to do with the gospel. It's the answer of a good conscience to God. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that that's what I was... Uh, I know it's hard. It's very hard to challenge traditions and stuff. But that is one thing that, yeah, you'd have to ask. Like, where is, where is the scripture for why you want people to, because <laughs> I've heard of things like that. Like some people in Canada, I know, they think that you should wait until people are 20 years old before they get baptized or get saved. You should never pressure anyone under the age of 20. And they would take that from the book of Numbers, how 20 would be the age of accountability in God's sight, where he makes people responsible for their choices and actions. <laughs> but they, I, don't know that. I don't see that in the scriptures. It's pretty clear to me. If someone has the capacity to understand the word of God and to understand their sin, that means they have the capacity for God to judge them. And if they have the capacity for God to judge them because they understand their sin, then they can also understand forgiveness. And if they can understand forgiveness and receive forgiveness, there's no reason why they can't be baptized or why they can't take part in the Lord's Supper. And so... To me, if you're going to tell me someone shouldn't do something, you should provide something from the scripture that says that. And I haven't ever seen that yet. So, yeah, we actually, yeah, we are going to conclude. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I am clear with the uh, portion from First Peter chapter three. I liked the explanation. Okay. There, you said in the last verse, yeah, uh, yeah, what you said was right. The baptism should be happening in the heart first of all. Really, I like this that uh, phrase. Uh, baptism is something which our, we are adding into the body of Christ that does by Holy Spirit. Then it is the uh, uh, that is that should encourage us to declare through the waters of baptism. Yeah, that should happen uh, the, by the person who is accepting Jesus Christ. Who is he should be personally. Uh, moved by uh, the Holy Spirit and himself should he should understand that I should uh, declare I should testify the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. through the baptism yeah, yeah. really, uh, yeah, really amen. Uh, thank you thank you so much yeah, yeah. maybe uh,